Hi there everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and we're continuing our series talking about Task List 5. And on today's episode, we're gonna talk about B-8. Now within this video, we're gonna talk about defining and providing examples for unconditioned, conditioned, and generalized reinforcers and punishment. So here we go. Up first is unconditioned reinforcers. Basically, these are defined as stimuli that we are biologically hardwired to experience as reinforcing. So these kinds of reinforcers don't need to be learned, and they increase within those behaviors when they are delivered as a consequence. So examples of this are yummy food, sex, and escape from pain. Within clinical ABA, we like to use unconditioned reinforcers for very early learners until we are able to actually pair those reinforcers with something else. Unconditioned punishers are defined as stimulus change that decreases the future occurrence of any behavior that precedes it without pairing with any other form of punishment. This means that we are born experiencing this sort of stimulus as a punisher and learn to avoid engaging in behaviors that result in that unconditioned punisher. For example, I don't need to be taught that pain will be painful. I know that if I cut myself with a knife, it's going to hurt. So in contrast to unconditioned stimuli, where we didn't need to have previous learning to occur to respond to them, conditioned reinforcers require parent before they're able to alter our behavior. For example, a child who starts their life uh, completing puzzles with their parents, their parents being the person that is highly reinforcing to them, will learn to contact reinforcement in the future when they put a puzzle together, even if their parent isn't around them. So now let's talk about conditioned punishers. Basically, this is defined as a previous stimuli that function as a punisher because of prior pairing with one or more punishers. For example, we aren't born knowing that if we run a red light, we're going to be punished for that particular behavior. We learn that when we run the red light and we receive a ticket, that it serves as a form of punishment. When we are discussing stimuli that have been generalized and serve as those functions, it means that the stimulus has been paired with a variety of other stimuli and therefore breaks free from the particular motivating operation. So generalized reinforcers are defined as conditioned reinforcers that because of having been paired with many other reinforcers does not depend on an establishing operation for any particular form of reinforcement effectiveness. For example, money is the most popular generalized reinforcer that we have because over time we have learned that once we have money that it can be used to purchase other things and we aren't born knowing this compared to pain or hunger. Generalized punishers are defined as conditioned punishers that have been paired with many other punishers in the past. It doesn't depend on a motivating operation for any particular form of punishment for its effectiveness. So for example, let's say that we have a child who has a learning disability and whose teachers have not consistently provided the support for their academic career. In future interactions, this child may have teachers function as punishers across their lifetime due to that past experience. So I know that I've covered a lot of information and I do hope that it's very helpful within your studying for the task list five. As a reminder, this is a series, so I do recommend that you follow the previous videos. That way you catch up on what we discussed today. And today we talked about B-8. So once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below like, share, and follow us. And once again, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, and have a great day.